How do you give feedback to another developer about their work without them bashing in your head with a mechanical keyboard? And I do prefer to use a mechanical keyboard for that. It just sounds better. Pretty soon, in your software development career, you'll have to evaluate someone else's work. As a junior developer, that can be reviewing code written by a peer or an intern. If you're more senior, you'll regularly give feedback to more junior developers. If you don't know how to give feedback properly, not only is it not going to have the learning effect you're looking for, it's also going to result in you having a bad relationship with the rest of your team. Fortunately, there are proven models you can use to give feedback well. I've had the most success with one in particular. No, it's not the sandwich, even though I'm Dutch and I do like my sandwiches. Today, I'll go through my favorite approach to giving feedback and how that maps to software development specifically. And then I'll cover a few practical tips for you. Before you can give feedback, you need to prepare, and often that means looking at someone's code in detail. What's the best way to analyze code and pick up the main issues quickly? I have a free workshop for you on code diagnosis that teaches you a three-factor framework that helps you focus on what's important when reviewing code. Go to arium.code slash diagnosis to get access. It's built on my own experience reviewing lots of code. The workshop looks at code from existing Python packages that are used in production. You might use one of these packages yourself right now. So, arion.code slash diagnosis. The link is also in the description of this video. There's different ways of giving feedback to someone and tools to help you do that in a structured way. A well-known model is SBI, which stands for Situation Behavior Impact. You describe a specific situation, the behavior that you have observed, and then what the impact was of this behavior. For example, at a recent customer feedback session situation, you called our customer a knucklehead for not understanding the user interface you built. Behavior. As a result, the customer got angry and has stopped the project. Impact. Another type of feedback model is the Pendleton model. This organizes feedback more as a shared responsibility of both people involved in the feedback session. As a manager, you first establish that the employee is ready to receive feedback, then you let the employee give their opinion about the situational behavior, and then both employee and manager share what went well, and they both share what could be improved. And finally, you agree on a plan to achieve that improvement. Yet another type of feedback model, you may know this one, is the 360 degrees model, where you collect anonymous feedback from your peers via a survey. Not only that, you also fill in the survey yourself. So it's a great way to see how self-aware you are and learn about your strengths and weaknesses. But the model that I like to follow when I give feedback to junior developers is the SEDAR model. It's a really interesting model of giving feedback that puts the controls in the hands of the employee. It's still structured, but as a manager, you behave more like a coach. The great thing about this model is that you can basically let the employee do the talking. This works really well if you're a manager who doesn't know what they're talking about. This is how most people become managers. You can ride this thing all the way to the top, baby. All kidding aside, the five stages of SEDAR are context, examples, diagnosis, actions, and review. Let's see what each stage means and how you apply it to software development. But first, if you're enjoying the video so far and you want to give me some positive feedback, give the video a like. It helps more people find this content on YouTube. Context is the first stage of the set of feedback model and it's all about setting up an environment suitable for feedback. For example, suppose you're going to discuss a piece of code that someone has written. The purpose of giving feedback is to discuss ways to improve the code and help the other person write better code in the future. You won't accomplish that by being harsh, critical or offensive. Stay positive and focus on improvement. You need to create a safe environment. You should both feel comfortable sharing your thoughts openly without passing judgment. And that means leaving egos behind and focus on the outcome, not the person. And remember that even though you might be more senior than the other person, that doesn't mean you can't be wrong. The second stage is the example stage. This is where together you identify specific behavior or actions. Or if this is a code review, specific areas of the code where things are not designed that well or could be improved. Don't diagnose yet. We're simply collecting information at this stage. Next up is the diagnosis phase. This is the most interesting part in my opinion. Here you're going to let the recipient of the feedback find out why they acted in a certain way or why they wrote the code in a certain way. 
Let the person arrive at the conclusion themselves by asking open-ended questions without assuming too much. For example, if you find a piece of code hard to read, don't just say, this code is hard to read. Instead, ask a question. I don't understand what's happening in this part of the code. Can you walk me through it and explain? What you're essentially doing here is giving the feedback from your perspective. I think that X or I don't understand Y or the way I've approached this in the past is like this, etc. Giving feedback from your perspective is important because it avoids labeling the other person, which might push them into a defensive mode, which is not constructive. The goal is to ask questions. Lightly direct the other person until both of you fully understand what's going on and what the root cause of the problem is. If this is part of a code review, you can use design principles to clarify the problems. For example, I think the reason this code is so hard to read is because it violates the law of Demeter. So there's a lot of extra information in the code that shouldn't be there. In the action stage, you let the recipient of the feedback come up with actions or steps to be taken to ensure that the situation that you identified and diagnosed in the previous steps doesn't happen again. Again, the feedback provider takes a coaching approach and you ask open-ended questions to guide the other person. This part should really feel like a discussion. How are we going to solve this problem that we identified? What are your thoughts? If you're giving feedback on code, this is the step where you discuss solutions, alternative approaches. It will be a sort of brainstorming session where you coach the other developer to come up with improvements themselves, nudging them in the right direction from time to time. This coaching aspect is really important. If you simply hand the solution, whatever that is, to the other person, they'll lose the sense of ownership they have, which erodes their feeling of being responsible. And ultimately, that's going to lead to what I call throwing things over the fence behavior. They just exactly do the thing that you told them to do and nothing more, leaving you with the responsibility to make sure that actually makes sense and that all the details are taken care of. I much prefer an environment where developers have more freedom but also feel responsible for the work they do. This also leads to everyone in your team being more involved in the product, but also feel like they're being part of the success, assuming you have some success. The final step of SEDAR is the review. Here you make sure that the context of the feedback is clear and you've together decided on the actions to take. So that's SEDAR. Really nice feedback technique built on coaching and helping the other critically analyze their work while they still retain ownership of that work. To round off this video, let's go through a couple of quick tips on giving feedback that you can combine with the setter approach. The sooner you give feedback on something, the better. For the person receiving the feedback, this is better because they can adjust what they do more quickly. But for the person giving the feedback, this is also much easier because the tasks or the proposed changes in the code were probably discussed with you recently. So it will be easier to review. Giving feedback regularly is also important it will lead to less surprises and problems don't get out of hand. To give an example from code reviewing, it's a difference between giving feedback on small pull requests often versus giving feedback only once in a while on a huge number of changes at the same time. If you keep your pull requests small, then giving feedback on them is also much quicker. The alternative is huge numbers of files that have been changed, deleted, moved, etc. It's really hard to do a code review on that because you quickly lose track of what's happening. This also potentially leads to more bugs and the junior developer spending too much time going in the wrong direction. Tell the person exactly where the issues are. Stick to the facts. Don't leave room for ambiguity. If you're reviewing code, don't say generic things like this code is really bad or this is hard to read. Instead, say things like there's a lot of hard-coded values in the code that should be moved out into a separate settings file. Or, this is a really complex if-else statement. Can you simplify it by splitting it up or by using a strategy pattern? This, by the way, is a specific technique. If you want to learn more about the strategy pattern, check out the video at the top. Part of being specific is to make sure you focus on the code, not the person. If you want to give feedback on the behavior of someone, discuss the impact of the behavior but don't get personal. If you want to give someone feedback and help them improve their weaknesses, don't do that in public. Do it in private, in a one-on-one -on -one session. You need to make sure there's a safe environment. In the case of code reviews, which often happen in semi-public, namely the comments section in your Git management system, 
you need to be extra careful to not make things personally if you want to criticize certain code. Focus on giving feedback to make the code better. Focus on improvement. Apart from listing minor changes in a piece of code, limit your feedback to one or two things. Any more than that and you're just going to demoralize the person. I have a list of 10 things that you're doing wrong and I want to go over them with you in detail for the next two hours. Really drill deep into your faults. Don't do that and stick to behaviors or actions that the other person can actually change or influence. Don't criticize someone for their code being slow if that's actually a limitation of the compiler. And sometimes you have to pick your battles. You can't fix everything in one feedback session. Think to yourself what one or two things are going to be the most effective in the current situation. Focus on those so you give the other person some air to breathe. And the next time, focus on other things. The whole idea of giving feedback is to improve things. You need to measure whether that's actually happening and then adjust as needed. Also stresses how important it is to you that the process or the code improves. Don't just send off the developer with the feedback and the you have one week to fix this and I don't ever want to look at this code again. Instead, let the other person know that if they have any question, they can always reach out to you. And in some cases, you might want to revisit the feedback in another session to see how it's going. That's it. If you want to learn more about the types of skills I talked about today, check out this video where I give you a list of seven books you should definitely read that are going to help you become better at this. Thanks for watching and take care.